Okay. Can you do one take one? <laughs> one take one. Oh, with two? You're really going to ruin my- There's going to be a fucking peak. Hey, you guys are acting like this is harder than it is. You're acting like you've ever done post-production on this podcast. Girl. Girl. Uh, you're acting like I've never done post-production on anything. I've I've sunk narrative with no slate. One. That's a bitch. One take one. Thank you. Excuse me. Chris? My friend Shannon's texting me. Uh, no, get out of here. Get out of here. I I'm swear. I'm focusing. Yeah. Turn that thing on. Okay. <laughs> Chris, what was your slate going to say? I, I didn't have anything in mind. <laughs> you can't think of anything? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm I've got to take out some anger on both of you, okay? <laughs> Why? You spent all day traveling to my house, and I just can't stand you either of you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm so glad you guys are here. I've missed you so much. I've missed doing the podcast, almost honestly. Almost honestly. <laughs> this fucking guy, man. This fucking guy. It's not my fault it was canceled, COVID queen. I, I, we should, I'm sorry. I'm like... <laughs> I had too much caffeine. I chugged a lot. COVID is no joking matter. Speaking of canceled, you guys, it's, do you see how windy it is outside? Are we legit about to be in the middle of a fucking tornado? <laughs> it might make things interesting as long as we don't lose power. The drama. <laughs> now that she's a vlogger, she understands that you need drama. That's not my vlog's vibe. Well, I'm not, and I don't mean like drama amongst other people. Lizzie's making anything drama. Like, what, what were you saying this morning? When I got to the airport today, I said, should I just not come for the drama? And I was like... I, that would only what i didn't get the drama it's all about how you frame it baby so how was your flight in did you guys miss me very much lizzie texts me a lot but sometimes it's overbearing so i just have to i like, never hear from him he doesn't respond <sighs> yesterday i was like wow i've sent him a lot of messages but i've got more to say <laughs> And I do feel very detached from the world here in a weird way. Like I haven't kept up on any like because a lot of times on this podcast, we do cover like hot topics. Yeah. I don't know anything that's going on. I have been living in my own little world. of Honestly, nothingness. that might be for the best. And I think I might have just been bored when I was living in California. Not that like because you were really one of my only yeah. friends that I like hung out with frequently and I didn't have family there. So I'd be like. Oh, well, like we would talk a little bit more because I was doing less. And yeah. now when I'm doing so much, it's hard to like be constantly on my phone. I feel, I, I don't know. It's weird. I get it because I've been vlogging on my phone. So whenever you text me, I can't respond. I know. That's why I've got to get you on a vlog camera. And you know what? Thank you so much for the vlog camera. <laughs> You're welcome. I will learn to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text her right now. And she'll be like, I can't talk. I'm on my vlog camera. Stop texting. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just put it in do not disturb when you're vlogging? It doesn't work like that. Oh, I don't know how that <laughs> works i don't, use I don't that know how element of a phone. <laughs> yes you do because every time i go to text you it's like user what does it say no if my it's phone insulting. it says do not disturb bitch because i'm busy but the thing is it doesn't work if my phone is open i don't think because when my phone's open if it's on work mode i still get the notification i hate work mode i'm just gonna come out and say it damn he's needy today <laughs> are you not getting enough attention here do you need to see your mom more often? probably too much attention that's why i'm like disconnected from the world which is also why i think i get a lot of comments sorry i'm talking a lot yeah there's like people on my vlogs will say you guys are so much happier in colorado and i think it's just there's a lot more going on that's yeah. more stimulating we are around family and that's why yeah like even when you guys were flying in today i was like well, what are we going to talk about i don't know anything that's going on in the world i've just been trying to garden <laughs> did you notice my flowers when you came in no i'll let you talk now i did not notice your flowers i'm so insulted i know i'm so sorry like how did they not hit you in the face with beauty i think i was like distracted because i was a little bit perturbed by the guy that drove us here oh he was like do i turn here i was like we don't know dude <laughs> We don't, th this is a foreign space to us are you fucking you just picked us up from the airport we don't fucking live here nobody can find this house yeah well, he was like do i turn here i was like I, sure <laughs> what does the gps on your phone say you have two phones open with gps maps on them have you looked at either <laughs> Something I thought was interesting was I forgot. So we had booked Chris a day early from when we're about to shoot Shane's podcast. And I didn't ask you at the time because you were really going through a lot. So I was like, I'll ask her later if she's going to join our podcast excursion because I didn't want to like yeah. overwhelm you. And so yesterday I was like, I guess I should confirm with Chris that he's OK to film the sip because I never told him. Oh, and really? I go, and I say, hey, Chris, can we film the sip tomorrow? Because Lizzie's on your flight. So we're going to. He knew I was on the flight. I had texted him. When? 
Because I had to figure out what the flight was because you just sent me a picture with no airline on it, just a time. I, I didn't like, book Chris's flight. It was the best I, I could do. I know. You said that already also. And I was able to figure it out because I booked many a Southwest flight. So Lizzie lost Chris at the airport this morning. Well, you found him first. No. So I found Chris <laughs> in the security line, but he didn't see me. I was behind him. So I just went, psst. And then he looked over at me and I went, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny well, and then I was like let me cut because I was well behind him like you know how it wraps around I you was, can't cut shut, even if we're he, fucking married do you not know how we're boyfriend work? and girlfriend of course I can cut with him they don't know that I wasn't just his spouse in the fucking bathroom you're like my ring this is my man yeah my I ring. Was, and I like and then he like looks at the woman and he goes do you mean is she cuts it's like shut the fuck up Chris you just need to roll with the punches I'm your wife who is in the potty and the fact that you had no loyal to me low <laughs> The fact that you had no loyalty to me in that moment hurt. Was sickening. I to be put and no, then when I tried I agree to put with the, you, Chris. What? Because yes, we went to the Rockies fireworks game. It was fabulous. Like God, the Fourth of in. July I game. Begged, it begged just, to come. I said, most please gore- let me come for the Fourth of July. He said, No. Yeah, right. It's my mom's birthday and she hates you. Well, no, you which want- I know is a lie. Vicky loves me. <laughs> no, she she had COVID, so she wanted to no, reschedule the podcast. Oh, blame it on the COVID. It, well, no, you were like <laughs> act like you're you're just not down with COVID. She said. Can I come and we'll film a podcast on the weekend before the fourth? And I was like, "You're crazy! I'm not filming on the holiday weekend. I want to relax." No, and I do said nothing. on the fourth. I said I'll fly in and fly out on the fourth. Because <laughs> it was hell cheap. And I said I'm not doing the weekend either because it's my mom's birthday, so we're not recording podcast. I didn't say you, if you wanted to come hang out with me. I did. I begged. I said, "Can I come hang out?" She's lying. <laughs> no, pull up the text, bitch. You're the victim on this podcast. I'm the victim on Shane's podcast. Whatever. <laughs> um, okay, a few interesting things now that I'm looking at our text messages. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie sent me that there's like ball attachments for the back Actually, of Crocs. Actually, my baby mama Haley sent me the ball attachments. Haley's all about Croc attachments, which I think is funny because I don't even think she has a pair of Crocs, but she got me spurs for the back of mine, which are so funny. You should don't send- ask for an asset. I lost my Crocs. I can't get you a picture. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sure if we scroll up and I bought you those Crocs. I know. I haven't told you yet, but I lost them <laughs> months ago and it's fucking devastating. That's why I've been looking at Crocs today on Prime Day. <laughs> it's because Lizzie's like, we should shop on Prime Day. And I was like, Okay, but uh, <laughs> we should. that's just something I saw interesting that she texted me that I never replied to. So there's ball attachments to the croc. I'll show it in the video. Scro- but what I was really getting to. There's scrotum attachments for the crocs. Just for clarity, it's they're not balls. They're like, b- they're balls. They're testicular balls. And people get that on like hanging on their cars. Yeah. It's you'll- not as good on a car. But a scrotum croc charm, kind of everything. Kind of hits. <laughs> kind of the vibe. Should we get crocs? You I put, have Crocs. If you put those scrotums on the back of your Balenciagas, it would be well, such a vibe. I'll do that for okay. sure. Um, and we're all of us in Amazon Prime Girls. So Lizzie says, I found Chris, then stopped to buy headphones, mm-hmm. and now he's missing. Yeah. And I said... Don't worry about him. He's probably jacking off in the bathroom. No! <laughs> and I had already texted Chris, where are oh, you? Man. And he said, the bathroom. And I said, well, Chris, <laughs> I've seen the Shane Dawson podcast, oh. and I can't help but imagine you're jacking off in there right now. So if you haven't yet tuned into the Shane Dawson podcast, which I'm sure you have, you- last <laughs> week, uh, Chris told us about all the sorts of places he does that kind oh. of thing. And this oh. week, Chris told me that telling you guys that is his biggest nightmare, and he doesn't want to talk about it, so maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> oh, we can pivot. We can pivot. We'll pivot. We'll pivot. Did you relieve yourself in the bath in the airport bathroom? No, I no, didn't. He did and it. I'm so terrified that everyone thinks I'm gonna do that every time I'm in a bathroom now. Well, and no, why did I say that? I <laughs> I didn't know you were setting up lights downstairs and I heard the bathroom fan on. And so I said, Lizzie, is he not setting up because he's jerking off? <laughs> no. And she said, dude, I don't know, probably. And then I go downstairs <laughs> to get the light and he was down there. So I was like, phew. And then Chris goes, like, well, I'm gonna bring it up because I need to like I need to address the situation. I was like, you don't want to address the situation because then you're doubling down there's on it there's nothing wrong with it i base i pee outside of I'm, this house you know all what? day every day i'm one second away from jacking off outside of the house <laughs> jesus so. christ as I, I here's here's yeah it's nobody's fucking business where you or how far but, your load. but i made it everyone <laughs> you you did do that so it's a lesson it's, but you it learned it doesn't become their business because you told them that you don't need to talk you know it's and don't become a victim to your own story because then they'll pry on you yeah. that's how the world works pray Horrifying. on you pray on you mm-hmm. yeah i want to cry and never speak again okay bye <laughs> would jacking off help with that feeling <laughs> no Should you, you know, need to excuse yourself if Just, you gotta go beat the meat do it right here you who know, cares dude no. i don't even mind honestly have you thought about an only fans no i hate my body lean into the brand <laughs> lean into it 
Okay. So how has your life been? I heard there's a new COVID variant going around. Okay. I don't, I'm not a COVID fucking connoisseur just because I had the disease. <laughs> okay. Well, tell me how it was for you. How was it? It was, you know, kind of lame. It was like a bummer. Well, you said like you were very physically ill. Um, yeah, I was ill. <laughs> I was, okay. This is a great I, story. I, I, I was sick Woo! and I was not okay. I you should keep telling stories. I, <laughs> check out the vlog every Tuesday where it's, where it's this good. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, maybe you'll have more excitement about this to celebrate your vlog. Yeah. I was setting you up. <laughs> oh, for my melting pot story. I'm so sorry. Woo! Got that COVID brain fog. <laughs> Are you um, a long hauler? Apparently. Okay. All I know is COVID now. Uh, okay. Weird, because so... you can't talk about it. You didn't even know what kind of variant you had. <laughs> what? How do you know? No one knows. What I heard there was now. a B something variant. Yeah, I'm happening. sure there's always been a bunch of fucking variants, but it's not like I'm taking a test that says like, you scored this on the variant <laughs> exposure test. I know. And we're joking. You have. A... I know. It's all I can feel, okay, but I haven't been able to grab it. And we don't really mean to joke about this. I know it is very serious. No, it's so serious. <laughs> it really is no it really it is, really I is. Was, <laughs> we're just really not, is. We're not in the headspace like i'm sorry i've had a shit ton of sugar and i hate my life yeah oh so my god <laughs> okay do you want me to get into the drama no do you want to talk about the melting pot or not i promised joe i would fuck it the melting pot on the podcast what you would fuck it the melting pot no i no Whoa, this but is honestly that bitch territory. is so dark i could fuck at the melting pot no one would know but i promised joe after our experience that i would fuck them publicly. i can picture joe pick, jacking off in some weird places me too <laughs> okay anyways <laughs> joe no joe's a normal jacker offer He's gonna, he hates me. He's like, this is, he doesn't want his face on the vlog. He doesn't want anything That's to do with That's the most horrifying life. part. Okay, let's start at the beginning. So, the very beginning. It was April 28th, 1990. San Francisco. Okay, shut Kaiser up, Lizzie. <laughs> you were born at a Kaiser? Are you judging? You fucking judge me. I have Kaiser. Bitch. I have Kaiser. You have Kaiser? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, there. when I tried getting tested for COVID with Kaiser, they're like, we can get you in in two weeks. I'm like, after it's over? <laughs> you want me to infect all of the USA and then you'll tell me if I had COVID or not? Thanks a lot, Kaiser. <laughs> That's Kaiser. Um... <laughs> <laughs> not sponsored so I my premium's great though <laughs> when you're ever able to use it yeah literally never I call them and I'm like okay I need a specialist because I really am having this issue and they're like well to see a specialist you have to see five doctors that can recommend you to that specialist I'm like I don't got that time, kind of time I'm just gonna die it's to true. see a specialist you have to wait until the moon is in the second house and Jupiter aligns with Mars honestly then peace will guide the planets it's no wonder they have great and love We'll steer the stars. Okay, mommy. This is the dawn. Focus. I okay. hate when I'm you sing so on the podcast. Sorry. I've, I'm, <laughs> if you want to sing, sing, sing on back. your vlog. I do. If you would, if you would watch, you fake ass fan. <laughs> Anyways, back to me. So I'm vlogging now. Chris, tell me when the story's <laughs> over. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna check in with some people. Listen, my husband mm. wanted to surprise me by ce to celebrate the vlog because it has been going very well for me. It really has. It really has. Joe read it. He's like, these people like. Did you pay for these comments? And I was like, I know. Like, I think these people like like me. I'm so proud because I did tell Lizzie when she started. I was like, you just have to know this is your own venture. You have to like brace yourself for oh. you to build up. And it's like, I thought I was thinking like, oh, if you can get twenty thousand diehards on your vlog, you're like cruising. Yeah, and you're killing it. I'm uh, and honestly, I'm really. I, this isn't part of my story, but I was like, I did want to say like, it's a really scary thing to do. Yeah. To put yourself out and there. I, and I feel really stupid because I'm an insecure person. So it's really hard to do that. And I had filmed multiple vlogs before which you know like mm. i've probably shown you over the years a bunch where i'm like never mind i'm not i'm not gonna <laughs> post this fully edited vlogs like i'm just like this is nobody's business mm. i can't show this to anyone um and then it's like you get really scared you know what i mean like i watch how hard you and shane work and i and i like you know i like a lot of youtubers and i watch a lot of them burn out and have a really hard time with it and it becomes sort of this toxic thing this like every you hear like the toxic hamster wheel or whatever and so like going into it like i was fucking scared and you also don't want to fail i mean it's yeah like, well i i was positive i was gonna fail and failing is subjective but i just mean like no. if you're going to display yourself yeah and then and have yeah. up and downs for every creator but i'm just saying it's like it it's is a scary. scary thing to put yourself out there like and then that. you think like oh everyone 
someone from my high school is going to see this. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, bitch, you're 32. And you think this is the year to start vlogging? Well, because there is a threshold, right? It's like you before you really have people watching, I guess, it is you're initially asking the, yeah, the people who you grew up with or the people who are going to be like, this bitch thinks she can be a vlogger. Exactly. And so it is over hurdle. It's like coming over the hurdle of your own. Uh, immediate circle of acquaintances being like they're gonna watch this so that's hard to do too and then it's just like how I I don't like I don't know how to talk to the camera like I every time I'm trying to be on your vlog I'm like just don't do this to me (laughs) just turn it away turn it away from me they they don't no one needs to know and so it's like I just decided like I had this epiphany because I was so sad that I didn't have the energy to be anything but super (laughs) authentic I was like well I uh, gotta do it this way because I can't do anything else like I can't I can't pretend to be okay or anything else right now so then I realized like oh wait I can fucking use this as like a really healthy outlet for me in a time when all I want to do is like rot in my own bed and filth Mm -hmm. so I've been actually like really liking it because it actually like I'm not getting ready for it but I am getting out of bed yeah and I think that's really positive and it's fun to have something to creatively work on yeah. that's, because vlogging is fun in that sense where you're creating your it's just like an interesting craft. Yeah. And I like using it as like a healthy push to do things that I wouldn't otherwise do. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm really liking it in that sense. And I think my goal is just to keep it really healthy and really positive for myself. But Joe wanted to celebrate the whole doing of it thing. So he and I've been nonstop talking about fondue because I fucking love fondue, man. (laughs) So I'm like the only I've been Googling it forever. And like Joe and I are going to Vegas eventually. And I keep being like, can we get fondue in Vegas? Like, when can we get fondue? So I found the melting pot, which is actually close to where you used to live in Thousand Oaks. Oh, okay. So we go. I mean, like, I didn't live well, in we go. Oaks, I know, but, but we go well past your exit. Okay. But you're on the way, right? Um, and so we go. <laughs> Twenty minutes past me, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> it's not even close to your house. <laughs> I'll always ask Lizzie, like, "Oh, did you go to this movie theater?" She's like, "It was right by you." I'm like, "That's like <laughs> no. so far away from where I am." <laughs> it's never, I'm, I'm at your house. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> That's uh, why I have your location. <laughs> because I'm a liar or a fool. <laughs> so Joe, uh, I call the melting pot to go on like a Friday night, like last minute after I went. Right rock climbing because I wanted to like celebrate that myself and they're like oh we're not taking any more reservations like they're packed and like the hottest club in Thousand Oaks <laughs> so Joe I told Joe like never mind they won't take us let's just go to tequilas instead he didn't do something crazy no he made a reservation at tequilas at tequilas at he made a reservation at the melting pot without telling me and oh. he like wrote the he like it made it a special res- reservation too where he's like we're celebrating my wife like we're doing all this like that thinking, is cute so fucking cute We get there. There's nobody there. It's dead. (laughs) They lead us through a labyrinth of darkness in a shitty smelling environment where you physically cannot see around the corners to the degree of which everyone is screaming corners, corners, corners as they lead you into a back fucking booth that kind of looks like an old school train compartment with no windows and it stinks <laughs> it stinks like weird shit and cleaning supplies like this is not the vibe and it's so fucking dark but like not in a good way and there's no music can i tell you something you knew it was awful well no i i have no interest in going to the melting pot but when you do go to vegas there is a restaurant in pitch uh, a pitch black dining experience well that's something you sign up for yes i know the melting pot isn't yeah. that but do that when you're in vegas it's very fun it sounds like something i'd hate i thought I'd i hate like it to too, look at every great. bite i like i like curate every bite but then you have to use you have to use your senses in a way that you don't typically do so it, it actually becomes a very enjoyable experience but back to the melting pot. i'll consider it it's very fun <laughs> so then we get to the melting pot we're sitting down this guy comes to help us i'm still excited even though it's a weird fucking vibe and they their menu is like you can either get this for two or that for two people and it's like and i honestly just wanted to get all the cheeses but there's only one there's room for one pot so you can only do a cheese so the dinner menu like dictates you get a cheese, then you get a broth, then you get a fucking oh you get a salad. That sounds then, awful, dude. It was so gross and it was one hundred and fifty dollars, and it was so bad. It was so fucking bad. I can't like I was like choking it down. Joe's like, dude, I'm sorry, this is gross, right? And I was like, yeah, it's pretty gross. And we even asked the, so this and then the server goes, are you guys celebrating anything? And Joe goes, yeah, we are. I wrote a fucking essay on what we're celebrating and the guy leaves and that's how I know Joe like did all this effort because he's like just so you know dude like I wrote to them this is a big celebration I was thinking they were going to make a bigger deal about it like I thought they were going to bring like a cake out with chocolate this is congratulations at the very least know about something you know what I mean right 
So that got thrown out the window. And then I asked the server, I was like, do you just love fondue? And he goes, uh, not, <laughs> not working here. <laughs> Says that to us while we're spending $150. Not working here. I thought this was going to go a different way. No, when I you said you couldn't get a reservation. I thought Joe was going to call or you were going to call and say, but I'm a famous YouTuber. <laughs> no, I'm not that bold. So it basically the bottom line was it was fucking awful and it was so gross. We couldn't even eat the food. And then when we left, it was Ugh. $250. And you're still hungry. Didn't eat a fucking thing. We had Kraft macaroni and cheese at home. So I had to come on here and warn everyone. If you have delusions of the melting pot being a fantastic, we dressed up. We fucking dressed up. I was dressed the fuck up, like full face of makeup, body glitter. I had body glitter oh. on. And I was, and it's like, we needed this. You know what I mean? We've been at home crying for weeks. Like, we really needed a nice night. This is the first night, by the way, we've been out in at least nine months. Mm. Oh, no, that's not true. We went out. We went out. Okay. And so for a man that supports you. Yeah. He doesn't want to be seen by you? No, he doesn't want to be in the vlog. He doesn't want his face in the vlog. So he's like constantly calling me like, you need to post a short on YouTube. And How I'm does like, he even know what that is? I don't fucking know, but he knows so much shit. He's like, you need to stop swearing in your vlogs. And I was like, are you sure? Because I swore all over the podcast. He's like, you should probably stop doing that too. <laughs> So he's like, I love that he's like, we need to maximize yeah. the potential here. Yeah, him and you need his... to do shorts. You sound like he sounds like my YouTube contact. Like you need to he's... really think about making shorts. I'm like, and he like he has all these strategies like that I don't even understand. Like they're so strategic that my little mind can't even. I'm like, listen, baby, I get it. I'm not trying to be combative. I'll do whatever you tell me to do, but I don't understand the actions. <laughs> like Austin's always like, Aust I love working with Austin because he says- My the, brother. His brother, when he tells me things to do, he goes, first action, second action, third action. And it's like literally listed actionable items. Because he knows he's working with people that are <laughs> Spe <laughs> special. <laughs> uniquely <laughs> uniquely specific. capable specifically <laughs> capable in a niche environment in a safe space so joe i'm like joe's like just do it i'm like i get it but i feel like you're telling me something about a pdf on my instagram story that's linkable to a thing but i'm confused about what i'm linking to and i do post the recipes you did want to do the tortilla slap challenge we could do yeah. that as a short on your youtube channel i've never done a short on a youtube channel but hey yeah, well now you're spoiling more of my content like uh, that oh my gosh <laughs> it's something for them to look forward to they could go see it search it out well it's I not like that's ruining the video it is. No, it's not. It's like, it's uh, isn't, isn't it a viral challenge? Chris, we gotta go. I'm so done with you. <laughs> okay, do you want to talk about it. me again? Yeah. Let's... There's nothing to update Should you Should I spoil on. some things on you? Uh, no, because oh. you do have some things on me. See? That I'm holding out and on. And I thought you could hold the tortilla slap challenge to yourself, but uh, apparently. Although recently, we have been, to we so, well, mm, I don't know how much I want to <laughs> give away. Mm, what? Don't say any of it. Well, there's so much of it. There's is it something separate. I already know about? You know about all of it. Ugh, I guess we'll just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week because maybe we'll tell you then. Uh, for one of the things. <laughs> I'm being that. It's not even like a project. It's like, I don't know. We're just ever expanding our family, you know? What? That was a lot of hint to drop. Well, no, I'm talking about kids specifically. Like our baby making process. Right. You're right. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Okay, never mind. Ah! Um, okay. <laughs> They're adopting me. Do I drag Shane or do I grab crump, drag Crumble? Uh, let's do both, quite frankly. Wow. What's up with yeah? Lead with lead with Crumble, I think, and then we'll tiptoe into Shane respectfully. Well, we also have to honor. We'll make Shane. up Shane, for Shane with Crumble well, because Shane's a good man. He's do a great you, man. Do you know that Shane? literally texted me when i dropped my vlog he's like hey you don't have to use it but here's a better thumbnail <laughs> he is and he's like and he went you through don't he screenshotted us <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah he's he's very he's super sweet god i love him so much yeah could not be a more perfect partner for me but there are still circumstances where i have to like throw my head through the window <laughs> what and last night so like he knew people were coming in so he was doing what he thought was best and he went to the fridge and like we had just take jacked out off all over the place <laughs> that would be chris okay <laughs> Settle down. Oh, no. um so we had take out food from a couple of nights ago and you know the stinkiest thing in the world are brussels sprouts yeah and so we had gotten brussels sprouts and they've been in the fridge and so he's thinking like oh people are coming we need to like discard of the old and so I go to throw something away and he threw the Brussels sprouts in our kitchen trash can. You wish he had taken it all the way out. 
not do I wish it's it, to me it's common sense yeah it's I get like it you Joe's can't... mad at me because I keep throwing dog shit in the kitchen trash uh, uh, <laughs> you uh. And Shane deserve Listen, each other. We take our trash out all the fucking time. Well, it was we not take only our that. trash out like three times a day. So if I want to throw some puppy shit in it, I'm gonna and throw by, some puppy shit. And in by it. we, you mean you? I'm just guessing. It's me and me and James. This is to shit on Joe a little bit, even though he's a great man. Joe will fill the trash can up, leave it filled, walk away from it, and then when I come in and add to the trash, he goes, "Why didn't you take it out?" Why didn't you take it out? Well, so he left. Shane had also like, there was also like a little bit of chicken. And I was like, all this stuff I'm going to wake up in this house is going to reek. And there's no getting rid of a smell that's been permeating (laughs) for 12 hours. And so he was like, okay, I'll take it out. But he didn't take it out uh, as fast as I would have liked him. So I start huffing and puffing and taking it out myself. And he's like, just chill. (laughs) And I was like, well, you're lucky I'm only complaining about one thing. And he's like, okay, what's the other one? I was like, no, because if I tell you that I am complaining. That is complaining about it where I just want to leave it where it is. You already when you introduced that I there know. was more. Was, I, I, was gonna, I was going to stop, but I couldn't. You know, like when you want to stop, but you just can't because it's like. Yeah, me. And so I don't use the fake straws because I don't want to clean the fake straws. Right. And so he's like, what? And I was like, well, those dishes that I can't put in the dishwasher have been sitting in there for a week because I'm not willing to do it. And it's just nothing dry. And this is less Shane, more me. I hate cups and straws that aren't dishwasher friendly it's like then what's the point yeah it's absurd because i don't want to do that yeah i don't want to do it and so then he was kind of upset at me and i said i'm sorry i love you and i woke up to the dishes clean so just saying so you know what shane you might be reinforcing negative behavior (laughs) and next time if i were you i would leave the dishes in the sink no because that's what it typically is his words and i let him know that this tactic does not work for you he needs to speak with you (laughs) with love and kindness he does buy me food every night so i was thinking like maybe it is my there, job to do the little dishes but i don't know who knows there might be a trade-off there I don't might know. be a trade-off is that a pete what is that i don't know it's like a knockoff Lacroix called an aha and it's peach flavored maybe they'll sponsor me since Lacroix won't i'd like to try that um oh into what? the crumble so something yeah. shane did that was nice is you two arrived today and there's just like the biggest box of crumble cookies out yeah and so sweet of him yeah however Christopher, what Crumble's number one fan? Have you seen the TikTok that's been going viral about like Crumble and them being exposed and awful? No. <sighs> well, what it's ridiculous. Happened? Well, what happened? But the, she, this girl's like so serious, and she's like the most popular cookie brand is like whatever and growing rapidly, and she goes, but they're filled with some very controversial ingredients. Chris has come. <laughs> <laughs> and so I guess there's all these things that people are all upset about and it's so ridiculous. I mean, they're Is it not ridiculous. Great. What are you talking well, about? Well, look at it. Bleached flour, artificial colors, artificial flavors, TBHQ, a synthetic preservative that may harm the immune system. And so it, <gasps> I never started having COVID until I had crumble cookies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, so, but it, it goes into and this Chris thing is sick like, as fuck. <clears throat> It goes like artificial flavors linked to hyperactivity in children, which require a warning label in Europe. Artificial flavors, chemical mixtures produced by... I mean, of course, a cookie is going to lead to hyperactive behavior in children and adults. Um, High fructose corn syrup, heavily processed sweetener linked to increased risk of weight gain, type 2 diabetes, uh, cancer, and dementia. This sounds like every food in America. And that's the thing. is, So I saw this going viral and I I clicked out of it immediately because I was like, this is so ridiculous. But then I saw a bunch of people reacting to the same one being like you know what else all those things are in and they like walk into frame with like everything from the grocery store and i'm like what's your beef with like you're just trying to take down crumble i mean it's it doesn't have to be crumble specific but i definitely think there should be beef with all of those things what do you mean? We shouldn't be putting that shit in our bodies. I know, but nobody's ordering crumble thinking that they're putting something good into their bodies. Like, no. you can taste how awful it is for yeah. your body, and we still continue to do so. True. But it's also like, I take my crumbles in moderation, where it's like, I use their cookie cutter, yeah. and I normally do it when we're in large groups of people, and I yeah. just take a sliver of it. See, I think I'm doing it in moderation, but I'm really just eating sliver after sliver after sliver. <laughs> and then all she's of a like, sudden, I've eaten a 12 pack by myself, and I'm like, I'm shit. And that's why she started eating 
thinking them before the podcast and I wasn't, I'm like, I'm not food shaming you, but I'm just thinking like, can we do it after the podcast? Cause I know what happens five minutes into this for her. I'm going to eat a whole fucking lemon cookie right when we're done with this shit. That was, that's like, it's almost like their basic sugar. Like, oof. ugh. okay. Here, also, you know, yellow dye number five is outlawed in a lot of states yet. I'm still fucking bathing in case. Well, that's what I'm saying. Of course, if nobody looks into crumble cookie ingredients because we know it's awful. Yeah. Okay, with that, we have some ads and we'll be right back. Today's podcast is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We all love to save some money and thanks to Honey, manually searching for a coupon code is a thing of the past. Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and it applies the best one it finds to your cart at checkout. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites and when you go to checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for a coupon code that it can find for that site and if Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch as the prices drop. Recently, I was buying new leashes and accessories for my dogs, and upon checkout, I saved $4.19 just for having Honey installed. And Honey doesn't just work on your desktop, it also works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on savings, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid while also supporting our show. We'd never recommend something Something we don't use, so go get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash sip. That's joinhoney.com slash sip. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. I'm constantly looking forward to what I'm going to eat for dinner, but the last thing I want to do after a busy day is look through my pantry and try to put something together. And that's why I love HelloFresh. You get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can choose from over 55 weekly options. And right now you can select meals from the Taste of Summer series that are sure to become everyone's new favorite, like the Old Bay Shrimp, the Sausage Broil, and the Family Style Grilled Steak lettuce wraps. Their foolproof step-by-step -step recipes mean a more joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Also, if you're going away this summer, you can update your delivery address and enjoy your HelloFresh at your vacation destination. With just a click, plans are flexible, so they work around your changing schedule. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TheSip16 and use code TheSip16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash the sip 16 and use code the sip 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts hello fresh america's number one meal kit you know i live and thrive off of using doordash and that is why i'm so thankful they are a frequent sponsor of our show and doordash knows that you have back-to-back -back meetings errands to run and chores to take care of so the secret to clearing your to-do list is a little help from doordash you can get dinner household essentials and everything inside of one app with over 300,000 partners you can support your neighborhood go-to or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and even Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SIP. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SIP. Don't forget, that's code SIP for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. All right. It's hot out there, ladies. Sit down in the cool shade and have a sip of some iced tea with Ryland and Lizzie. What do you got for us? I don't know. I'm a little blacked out on caffeine right now. I'm going to be real honest with you. Like, I can't, if, like I do I look dead shame. behind the eyes? Well, wake up. I'm awake. The problem is I'm out of control. Okay. Focus. All right. So we're going to speed through this round. <laughs> Way to make this enticing for any listeners. Get Let's just right. speed through this. Let's just keep it moving. Oh, that's my impression of you. <laughs> Honestly, no. A lot of people are like, "Why can't he just chill out and let things evolve?" And I'm like, "Because I'm crazy." <laughs> so I love wow. a self-aware king. <laughs> Am I? No, I didn't even get to talk about my gardening yet. Well, there, let's talk about that on the next one. Fine. We're literally doing another one of these in two minutes. So just we can bring it all up again. <laughs> okay. Pete Davidson is the new face among other parts. You see what they did there? Of Manscaped. Okay. Pete Davidson is the face among other parts of Manscaped. Pete Davidson and his dick? That's the implication. Okay, but did they show it or did they get like an I'm underwear shot? I'm positive they did not show it. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to implicate that. We, we have that... seen him in his panties. He was in his panties for a Calvin Klein thing with MGK, which is just. Okay, Lizzie. 
fucked. <laughs> Actually, you got a lot of support the last time you dragged MGK. Dude, I just have to say, while I had COVID, I watched the MGK documentary. I had to turn There's it off. There's a documentary? After, dude, I had to turn it off after five minutes because I was just incensed with rage. That motherfucker is rolling blunts, getting high out of his fucking mind, jumping in his Lamborghini and driving 150 miles per hour down the 405 that I'm on sometimes, risking everybody's lives to listen to his own album. At 150 miles per hour on a public freeway while smoking high. How dare you? I don't give a shit what kind of attention seeking behavior you do that doesn't concern other people's safety. Don't do that. That's fucking annoying. I had to say something. I mean, someone's got to say something. That's fucking crazy, dude. I mean, I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know why who, and who chose to get in the car to film that. I'd be like, hey, honestly, could you slow down? He gets pulled over by the cops, and in the video, like that they kept, he gets pulled over. Yeah, he's and they're like, didn't we pull you over for doing this dumb fuck shit last week? And he's like, yeah. It's not cute. There's nothing cute about. Is this that. recent? Yeah. What streaming service? Hulu. He has a documentary on Hulu. On Hulu? Yeah. (laughs) Not sponsored. I have to check that out. On Hulu. I mean, try and watch it. And he's like, you know, I have all of these things because I just want to be accepted and loved. And then I become a self sap It's like, girl, if you're aware of it, fucking work on it. Stop it. Are you watching less TV in the summer? I can't find There's nothing good on TV. Did you get into the first season of uh, Only Murders? Oh, Only Murders. Actually, season two I'm living for. See, and I want to live for it because I loved... I'm belly chuckling. I haven't... I mean, I don't not like it. I'm just saying, like, for some reason when it's, like, summer and super hot outside, it's hard for me to sit down and watch a TV show when I love TV so much. Yeah. I feel like it's more reality TV season for me. Yeah, there's nothing really great in the summer, and that's for a reason, but I do have to say I am living for Only Murders and I'm excited for the ones to come out. I di- Did you see the second episode? Uh, of Only Murderers? Yeah. I've only got into the first. So how does Amy Schumer and Cara Delevingne pan out? Well, they're only like three episodes in, so nothing's panned out yet. I know, but are they good? Like, what is it? Yeah, they're funny. It? They're funny. And you know how I feel about <gasps> Amy. And you're saying her performance is good. And I hate Cara. Cara? Oh, whatever. my gosh. <laughs> okay, let's talk about someone you like. Oh, I love Only Murderers. So Bunny's mom makes an appearance in this Who's season. Who's Bunny? Bunny is the woman who's uh, murdered in the first episode. Oh, okay. She's the murderer of the season. But her mom's in the first episode and she's like this senile old woman who's like also very quick witted and witty. But um, she's trying to cut this piece of cheese and she can't cut the cheese because she can't see very well. So she's just trying to cut thin air a bunch and they film her cutting thin air a bunch and then she's just like, fuck this! And like takes the thing and just stabs it into the brick of cheese and picks it up and starts biting it. And she's this terribly classy rich woman. It just, it's funny. I love it. I love Steve Martin. I fucking live for Martin Short. I can't, I can't. It's, they're everything for me. I watch that show and I'm like, wow, this is why I do what I do. No mention of Selena Gomez, okay. I was wondering if somebody would catch that. <laughs> you know, uh, I have nothing I have nothing to say. Oh my gosh, okay, moving but on. Pa- I, I want Selena to succeed. I think she's good in it. I want everything for Selena. Okay. I, uh, Selena is a likable character. Okay. In real life. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> this keeps getting worse for you. I'm here for Selena. And I think people can get on board with your MGK rants. No, I'm here for Selena. I don't know if they're going to get on board with I Selena. I am here for Selena Gomez. Okay. I love, I've loved her for a very long time. Okay. Okay. I own one of her songs. What? <laughs> I bought one of oh, her songs. Oh, like on iTunes. Yes. You purchased it. A song. So you don't own it. You act like you owned the rights and you're collecting royalties. <laughs> That's, I want to be good for you. Uh oh. <laughs> Anyways, the, Chris, it seemed like oh, oh my gosh, that's our, okay. All right, what uh, you were saying? Uh, oh, it reminded me of Shane, one of the jingles on Shane's podcast. Oh, okay. That's a Shane and Ryland. <laughs> I listen to the jingles. I'm like, should I get jingles? It's kind of offensive that we don't have them, right? <laughs> Honestly, I watch Shane's podcast and I'm like, wow, Ryland's never respected me. <laughs> Ryland's never respected me or our show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to purchase per, whoa okay we'll get some jingles yeah we'll get some jingles okay next on our <laughs> iced tea I, <laughs> this is such a mess <laughs> Kristen Dunst and Jesse Plemons are married you don't know who they are no I looked I clicked on this link <laughs> and Jesse yeah I only know him from Friday Night Lights um, most people but that is the show that really catapulted me into wanting to become an actor Yeah, well, Jesse Plemons is in a lot of other shit, and he's very talented. Okay. But I put this on the docket because Jesse Plemons used to live in the house behind our house. Wait, in Studio City? 
in Valley Village. Okay. So he used to live in the house. Not like we do have houses in our backyards, which I get is a little bit confusing, but it's not. Th- he wasn't living in our backyard. He lived behind, like behind the fence. <laughs> I don't think anyone was thinking he lived in your no, garage. <laughs> people are commenting on my vlogs like, who is Lizzie just feeding a man that lives in a shed in her backyard? Oh. And I am. <laughs> but the, Jesse Plemons did not live in a shed in my backyard. Just uh, for clarity, he lived in a house. Different house, house though. Different house. Okay. Anyways, Jesse Plemons used to live behind you us. You never told me that when you lived there. It didn't seem like something you'd give a flying fuck about. Uh, I loved Friday Night Lights and Desperate Housewives were my high school among the hills. That's a very generic experience. That's why all, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was everybody's. Okay, so then why would you not find it necessary to tell me that? Because I would have gone like, on a I little jog. Tell fucking everybody then. Why like, wouldn't everybody you? needs to know. Now everybody knows. Now the audience knows. You know, Chris knows. Get Shane out of the fucking mm-hmm. gym. I'll tell him too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So Jesse Plemons lived in the house behind mine. Now he's probably in Kirsten's house. He's definitely moved on to Kirsten's house. <laughs> okay. But anyways, my dogs got out one time, and Jesse Plemons rescued them Did and he brought come them knocking back. Knocking on your door. Yeah. Did he recognize Bubs from the internet? It was not Bubs. It was Benny and Jelly. Oh. Pre Bubs. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Jesse. Congratulations, Kirsten. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> Florence Pug addresses Pew! Fuck that. I don't even know who that is, and I know that it's Pew. If she wants it to be pronounced Pew, Grammar she needs Police to get rid over of the here. G. Grammar Police being wrong. Florence Pug addresses critics of her Valentino free the nipple look. Did so you see it? I did see the look, and is the story that she got invited by Valentino to be at something Valentino wearing Valentino? Um, I did not look past her nipples. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's your commentary on the nipples? Uh, so there's this thing going around in the world lately where ladies are wearing dresses that are like Kendall Jenner's done it, and you can just see their nipples. And my only, I have no issue with freeing the nipples or seeing nipples yeah. or like be dick out. I don't care. But I found it weird that Instagram allows the nipple photos. I wonder if it's because they're like covered by mesh. Because I feel like if it wasn't a celebrity in designer Mm -hmm. this photo would have gotten blocked and that has nothing to do with my opinion on her showing her nipples i just think like instagram guidelines are choosing to let a celebrity slide i think more i don't give a fuck about these guidelines or whatever honestly i think you would though if you posted a nipple photo and yours got blurred and florence pews did not i mean yeah but it's like i'm not out here trying to post my nipple photos and i've got like great breasts i know i walked in on them today oh you saw them yes i didn't know you saw them i was knocking i was saying were you taking a shit (laughs) and you're like no but my nipples are out and i'm like too late i'm already looking at them you didn't say anything (laughs) nice about them well i didn't know if you'd want me to commentate on them after i was visually looking at them of course i want you to comment on them. they're great nipples (laughs) thank you are there any hairs yeah okay every woman's got hairy nipples i, I know i have hairy balls yeah that's different um <laughs> Is I, it? I mean yeah, they're, they're private don't. parts of hair yeah I mean, I wouldn't, don't compare your balls to my titties there's a huge <laughs> fucking difference well i'm just saying parts that aren't typically seen that have hair on them fair okay i just i personally it doesn't matter and i guess people were outraged well that's the the thing that bothers me the most is that there was like a uproar on the internet of people being like Get she's got life. tiny titties they were like, she's got tiny titties. So they're mad about the structure of her titties. And I'm going to say something that's not going to help my argument that I'm just an ally, but I saw her tiny titties and like Loki a bit turned on. I mean, great. You know? I, I loved what she said where she was like, I've had my body for a very long time and I'm not afraid of my fucking tiny boobs. And I don't have a huge liking for Florence Pug, but I do really <laughs> love how she handled this. Do and you even I know felt, who she is? Of course I know who she is. Oh, I don't. <laughs> 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 so just another celebrity that you're gonna shit on today i'm not shitting on her i'm saying I, said, I don't even like florence Pug. i don't but i like how she so that's pretty this. definitive in how maybe you i just like don't her. like her because she started cooking on her instagram before i have the courage to cook on youtube and she also has the courage to show her nipples i think she's I'm just a bold jealous. woman honestly i'm saying i'm down as fuck for her response mm-hmm. to this i get the jealousy i was jealous of Haley bieber's fucking soundstage i was like i thought this was That's a youtube right. channel <laughs> this crazy bitch my fucking dog's dead i'm having this was a horrible mo- this was week. a month afterwards no it this hasn't even last- been a month this was last week <laughs> no it was and yes it was it was well before and you were calling me about something crazy anyways i'm going through the worst time of my life and this bitch has the audacity to text me i'm so pissed Haley bieber (laughs) shoots on a sound stage (laughs) 
<laughs> well, I just couldn't believe it because if you look at Haley Bieber's channel, it's like it's a YouTube channel. It looks channel. like a bathroom. It looks like a bathroom, and I think it originally once was, but it just so like she did on Refinery Twenty Nine, like a check a out studio my studio tour, yeah. and I just my mind was blown because it's a YouTube channel, and I know what YouTube channels make. Yeah, and there's like a crew or a staff of a hundred. There's the most fancy cameras, yeah. lighting. This set had to have been a hundred k plus well, to build, and I know how much production costs. And so I was when like, you count all those heads, you got a multiple it by hundreds of dollars. And I'm like, even if she's bulk shooting this show, like four episodes in a day, there's no way it's making what they're spending. No. So I was just like, wow. this is, And really, like, I have no beef with it. I'm no. just like a little jealous because I'm like, you have real big FU money to just be like, <laughs> look at all these people look I hire my for my fucking hobby. Bathroom. For my <laughs> hobby. <laughs> this job I don't need. That's like me when I PA. <laughs> Do you want this water? Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I have a podcast and a famous dog. Moving right along. Next things next. <laughs> God damn it. You need to work on your transition. <laughs> well, that was me. I shouldn't say the GD word. Why? I just feel like. A little bad. Yeah. We do love God. Mm. We're a couple of God loving motherfuckers. We're all, everything is like not <laughs> on tone today. Because we missed each other. <laughs> and I told you we needed to go to breakfast, but we didn't get to go to breakfast because we got here at 2 p.m. Details. Okay. Doja Cat asked Stranger Things Noah Schnapp to set her up with Joseph Quinn. So I saw this headline floating around everywhere mm -hmm. and I couldn't bring it. Uh, I couldn't care enough to click. Okay. So here's, here's the real tea. Okay. All right. So Doja DM'd Noah, said, let me get at your boy. Noah said, slide into the DMs. Then Noah screen grabs the private conversation he had with Doja, posts it, because it's funny. It's a fucking funny conversation. And it's Doja Cat and some guy on Stranger Things. Why didn't she go straight to the source? I don't fucking know. But then Doja loses her shit, starts fucking besmirching Noah's name on the internet. Literally goes on a live. He's a snake. He's a weasel. He shouldn't have done that. Uses those words. She's no, but she like she kind of played down. He's like, I'm not trying to say like he's a snake, he's a weasel, but like that's kind of snake weasel behavior. She's like the audacity. How dare he? Like it's a power play on his part, and he's more famous than I am. And like and a then, stranger is that true? A Stranger Thing actor is more popular than Doja Cat? Oh yeah, Stranger Things is the biggest thing in the world. Can't get into it. Me neither. <laughs> and I've tried, man. Maybe it's because of the COVID. <laughs> One of the side effects of COVID is you don't get what everybody else gets. You get other things. Like a tingly feeling for Florence Pug's nipples. Okay. In when you don't even like her. In your in your heterosexual loins. <laughs> okay, so, and did he respond? What's the story? I don't think he responded, but people are like, Doja, man. Like, watch your language. Are people always kind of like, Doja? Yeah. Like, Doja's she... a fucking, that's the other thing, this bitch. She's talking about him, like, being out of pocket on the internet. Like, I cannot think of anyone <laughs> more out of pocket on the internet than Doja Cat. She's like, Taco Bell paid me a million dollars to write a jingle, and I'm fucking mad about it. So here's my passive aggressive jingle that's actually going to be really good for Taco Bell. She like, thought she should have got more, or it didn't go through? No, I'm, I'm making up that number, but she was irritated that she had had to do branded content. And uh -huh. so she, like, wrote a jingle about the Mexican pizza. It's so doesn't matter. <laughs> but the point being is like I what what makes me more crazy than anything is somebody taking an, an, an absurd amount of money from a company and then acting put the fuck out for the seven second thing they have to put on a TikTok mm. to earn that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's silly. It's silly. It's silly. Anything else or should we move on? I just thought that was crazy that she would go so gnarly in on a boy like Noah. And I, he's only 17 is what I read. Right. Yeah. I mean, all of it's well, all of it's headline. wild to get that upset publicly is a bit much yeah sometimes I, yeah i've learned that if you're even feeling upset it's yeah. best to just like put your phone away oh i really want to tease you right now but i'm not gonna do it thank you i appreciate can it can i please do it it depends on uh, what it was about i think you know what i'm gonna say <laughs> what i'm just not trying to tray you right now tray me isn't that the typo <laughs> from, <laughs> from the tweeter around the world <laughs> is it <laughs> I like blacked that out. Yeah. I feel bad about it. I'm like turning red. That's I'm fine. sorry. Anyways, <laughs> North's stop sign at the talent show or the fashion show. I'm so I didn't, I see. I only saw the photo headline of that too. So Kim Kardashian takes North to, North to fashion shows all the time and always has because okay. North like loves fashion and gore VFX makeup. 
Um, and North was like irritated that there were people in the crowd that were looking at her and filming her instead of, and this is Kim's spin on it, instead of paying attention to the fashion show. So North's fucking entitled ass writes stop on a sign and holds it up. So this guy who's filming, like she locks eyes with him and holds up a sign that just says stop. <laughs> and it's like, I get it. It's like, a lot. Stop the model. Stop the show. Stop, like, and stop look filming at me. me. And she keeps like coming out of these hotels like, you guys waited out here for us to take our pictures. Why would you do that? And it's like, she's making a good point. But it's annoying. Wait, so she went to a fashion show that's being filmed and wrote, stop filming me? No. she. Well, yes. So uh, those statements are true. <laughs> but the fashion show was probably being filmed professionally this is somebody in the audience with their own camera oh. phone filming north and kim and so did she come prepared with the stop sign no or I think did she, she used, write it with materials it, at her seat yeah she wrote it with materials at her seat i don't hate it i don't hate it but like i kind of there's something no, about there what <sighs> listen i'm by no means famous but there is <laughs> yes you are <laughs> no i mean really not but right but there is a certain thing about like being in public i have no issue saying hi to anyone that wants to say hi yeah. to me take a picture with anyone that wants to say hi to me but it is uncomfortable when somebody's taking a photo from afar without your permission i don't even care about the permission thing it's like you could just come say hi and take a photo yeah instead of like doing a weird thing from afar where I can obviously see that it's going on. I can feel it on. and it makes me uncomfortable. And yeah. so like I understand North feeling on like such a grand scale. Yeah. Like stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm with you North. I'm you know I last last time we spoke I I became a team Norther. But maybe I'm missing something because all the headlines I saw granted I didn't click on them they were like Kim's facing backlash for North's behavior regarding stop. Right, but it's also like everything you just said is so valid. I just I think but I think no matter what people are going to be irritated with an incredibly privileged child like Northwest. And she didn't ask to be born into that. No, so but I did. The best. So what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she's doing the best she can. This is not what I ordered. <laughs> and I feel like again, this isn't related to me, but I remember back in well, even recently I saw uh there were fans waiting outside of one of Justin Bieber's like townhouses or condos or something. Yeah. And they were asking for a photo and he said no, I'm not going to do it. Because yeah, he's like, this is my home. My home. Yeah. And I don't disagree with him. But also at another point in time, I remember him saying, like, I feel like a zoo animal. Yeah. And I can't imagine that North doesn't feel the same. He's lonely. Now he has Haley, but. Thank God. Mm. I'll, I love that love. All right. Well, let's get into some. Hold on. I'm cracking uh, my jaw. All right. I'm ready. <clears throat> let's get into some. Advice, though. <laughs> Okay, do you want to do a ver do you want to do a voicemail or a one that's Do a voicemail cuz I I think I need better glasses again. I think my eyes are getting more <laughs> fucked up from editing. Well, I could read. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey girlie, so I was with a guy for six years. I kind of suspected that he may have been gay because I came across in having a fake account where he was pretending to be female and having men comment on it and he was responding to it. Fast forward, we've broken up or another reason besides that. But I came across his profile that he has with his lover that it's a male. It doesn't have many friends on it and doesn't have much other than like pictures of them together. Do I congratulate him for taking that step and coming out or do I just pretend like I didn't see it and let him live in his peace and it says live in his peace and let him come out when he feels ready to fully do that um and not secretly thank you love you so did you understand what's going on yeah, but recap it for Chris. So oh, for Chris, <laughs> who's like got a finger up his uh, nose right now. OK, so <laughs> this woman was dating a man. The man had a secret account where he was acting as a girl flirting with men. And then they broke up unrelated to all of this. And now he has a separate page that is him with his current boyfriend. Uh -huh. But he's hiding it. Or he's not hiding it, but it doesn't have like very many followers. Mm -hmm. So it's like his private page for him and his new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And so she's asking, do I congratulate him or do I not acknowledge it and let him come out on his own terms? I think you let him come out on his own terms. Also, are you do you talk to him? If you're talking to your ex... 
I mean, it seems pretty amicable like, if she yeah. feels comfortable reaching I, out to him. I would say if you don't speak regularly, there's no reason why you should text him. But if ever. he has a page that's public, yeah. that's showcasing him and his new boyfriend, and you guys are civil, and there isn't a bunch of anger on your end surrounding him um, being with a man, I don't see why she wouldn't bring it up. I, For me, it's like... I didn't text my ex-boyfriend when his dad died because I am not on speaking terms with him. And I don't think anything coming from me would feel positive or good, especially in a time of in a, in a time of such uh, magnitude, like coming out or losing losing someone. So I think like, are you reaching out for yourself or are you reaching out for him? What's the dynamic of your current relationship, not your past? Even if it is for herself, though, she might be seeking some closure um, for herself because I haven't <clears throat> dated somebody that has come out um, in attraction to an opposite sex. But it, I can imagine it might have done something to your her confidence yeah. as well as a person, which even if you're not angry at him, it might have messed with your psyche a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. So if you need that closure and it's not a private account of his, I don't see a problem with reaching out to yeah. him, honestly. And I, I think, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But I also, hi yo. But I also think um, my my advice my advice though is a bit different, and it would definitely be you're never gonna get closure from a third party. It's got to come from your yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot rely on other people to give you your closure. It has to come from yourself. And if you're not on speaking terms with this guy, don't reach out to him. Find closure on your own. And if when he's ready to come out, it's his business. So I wouldn't, uh, if you're assuming he's still closeted, I would say, you know, let let him come out on his own time. His yeah, own time, especially timeline. if it feels a little, uh, not petty on your end, but you almost, like, if you're feeling like you want to rub it in for some reason, other than actual um, being Joy congratulatory. And celebratory. Yeah. Like if there's any alter ulterior motive, I would say hold off because he's already obviously struggling. Um, so... I would say if it's pure congratulations on your end or if it's for closure for you, I would think about it. But if not, I don't know. Chris? Chris, are you ready to come out? Honey. <laughs> Honey, baby. No, no I, I, I think that's a... good advice. I think outing people in general is a terrible thing. So if they're not out, don't do that. Well, yeah, but this is somebody... But... I don't think she's trying to out him. She's trying yeah. to have a private conversation with him. And yeah. when you're dating somebody... I mean, I don't know what it's like. What would you do if you're one of somebody you were dating came out to you? Um, I would try with every fiber of my self to not make it about me because mm -hmm. I don't think it has anything to do with me. You know what I mean? It doesn't not hurt though. If you've been yeah. together, I'm not saying no, no, I'm wrong. No, but. I, I'm, and I get that, but I also think that like the truth of the situation is it's just not about me. It's about them. Yeah. And they probably didn't get <clears throat> into the relationship with the girl th trying to yeah you know. and if and if it's something that they're just coming to terms with you know it's not my job to help anybody through anything i can if i want to if i'm emotionally available to do so like if my glass is full enough to spill over onto someone else's i'm happy to share but more often than not if i know that i'm not going to be able to be of service to somebody until i work on whatever i'm going through then i showing up is almost not passive aggressive. I just don't have a better term for it. But it's like if I'm doing something that's not coming from a very healthy place inside my heart, it's usually not going to feel good to the person who's getting it from me. Right. It would be very hard, though, to not. Be, that's what I'm be, saying. It would be very hard. It's a hard situation. Yeah. I, I do hope that he does tell her, though, because I, before I came out, was in a relationship with a, with a woman who I the way we broke them, the way things ended, I know I ended up hurting her feelings and I didn't mean to. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't out and I didn't know how to handle the situation. It's kind of a long story. But later on after I came out, I told her and she like teary-eyed hugged me and it like, I think meant a lot to her because I think she had thought... Pro probably closed things. up some loose ends for her as well. Not, yeah. <clears throat> probably things just made more sense. So I, I kind of hope that he would at some point. I'm, and I think the same is true for all breakups and all situations. If it's bad and there's an explanation at the end of the road to give it. But I don't, again, like, I don't think anybody should be waiting for that. I always think that if someone has an amends to make, they should make it. I don't think being gay or coming out as gay requires you to make an amends, though. 
But the explanation might be nice for someone else to hear, though I don't think a person being gay or coming out has to make an apology or say, listen, I'm gay, I'm sorry. Like, because that just, when I, I say think I'm gay, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry I'm like, but I yeah. think like explaining in a way that this relationship has hit a dead end because of. Yes, I no, It doesn't have to be an apology. No. But, you know, and I had the, like, I was uh, with a guy for a very long time. And when we broke up, I said, I'm not going to speak to you for a very long time. And I waited like a year and a half or something before I reached back out. And he just never wanted to talk again. So we just never spoke again. And so I think your advice is of not waiting for him for closure is sound advice. But if he comes around to it, um, I think being open to it is great. Yes. Hi, Rylan and Lizzie. First, I wanted to say I absolutely love the podcast, and I'm so glad we are getting to see more of Lizzie through her vlogs. Plug. Chris and Chris through Shane's podcast. Plug. Um, in about a month, me and my wife, both 29 female, are planning on moving out of our parents' house for the first time into our own apartment. I struggle with anxiety and depression without medication, and although I am excited about our move, I feel like once it happens, I'm going to crumble beneath both my depression and anxiety. It's the thought of big, irreversible change and commitment to the apartment complex that scares me the most. I wanted to ask what advice you all could give me to help me get past the first few days of packing and moving until I can get settled in. I would love to hear how Shane Ryland... Uh, and Ryland deal with the constant back and forth to Colorado and Lizzie because of her move and how attached she felt to her last home and would especially love to hear from Chris as he has uh, now dealt with difficult past few months. Thank you all so much for taking your time to read this. Love a Chris obsessed listener. Wow. Does she know? About what? <laughs> no, Lizzie. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> Listen, bitch, I regret leaving my house every day and cry about it endlessly. Your past house? Yeah. Really? That's one of the things that you're crying about? Oh, my God. It's, yeah, I could cry right now thinking about it. It's because, like, I remember sitting in my living room and thinking, like, wow, this is really great. And it's all going to end. In your previous house. Literally crying. You should not have picked this Bronx. <laughs> Way to go. I hope you're you okay with your anxiety and depression. <laughs> Are you not happy at your new house? No. <laughs> Lizzie, <laughs> hold on. We gotta don't cut. do it. We gotta cut. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, but it's only because nothing in this life is ever gonna be good again. Lizzie, <laughs> Lizzie. <laughs> but here I'm. Here I'm still going. That's my point. I'm in a deep, deep, deep depression and full of anxiety to the point of it being crippling. And like I stopped bathing and brushing well, I, my teeth. But this I. This is. But, uh, but the let me wrap it around. Okay. 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 The wrapping around is that I know that I have to and the knowledge that I have to encourages me to find the will to do so and it always brings me back to the belief of I would rather be present here on this earth right now than not and as long as I'm going to be present here I might as well do everything within my power to make the most of this experience and in order to do that, it means I have to get up and I have to keep going and trying things because I would have never known the love and joy and happiness of that house if I had stayed and wallowed in my previous depression. So yes, change is a really hard period of time. But when you start change, when you settle into the change, it becomes your now and then your now becomes your happy and then you're going to go through another metamorphosis which is going to hurt, but no matter what, if you're constantly focusing on building with the change, you can trust in your heart of hearts that you're going to find the same comfort and joy that you once had. It will be different. If you're dealing with loss, it's always going to be different and it's going to look different and you're never going to not miss what you really miss, mm -hmm. but you're going to have a different, a different sense of fulfillment. Right. And as much as it fucking sucks to say like it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all and if you stay where you are you're gonna miss out on a lot of things that you could potentially love yeah and i think um oh can i say one more thing yeah and to piggyback off that because you specifically said you're worried about getting locked in and stuck in an apartment that's the beautiful thing about life it is constantly changing it is constantly evolving if you don't like where you are you can always fucking leave it nobody can force you to stay unless you're in jail 
<laughs> so just don't go to jail, girl, and it's right. all good. <clears throat> but I have huge attachment issues to things. Like, and I always am comparing. Like, even when we moved from our previous California house to our last California house, I w- w- every time I'm walking the dogs, I'm comparing the walk. I'm comparing because I'm such a routine person that mm-hmm. I'm always comparing like what was and what is. And so when we moved to Colorado, it was a very obviously a huge decision. And with that, I think it turned my whole life around. I think I found a new sense of energy, a new sense of purpose a new direction Um, but that doesn't mean I also didn't feel like a part of me was dying like I had moved to LA and I had built such a life for myself in LA and I have accomplished a lot of what I wanted to do but there's still a lot that I want to do Mm -hmm. and sometimes I feel further from that leaving that Um, so I do still find myself comparing and contrasting a lot but I think if you don't dare to try your life is going to stay stagnant and boring and I think it's more depressing yeah even if you have moments of depression when you move out I think you'll grow from it and if this next apartment isn't the end all be all it will be a stepping stone to what's next and what Mm -hmm. will be great for you but I advise you uh, going full for force ahead as much as possible. Yeah, and you got like life is all a journey, so you gotta enjoy the trip. And it's never about the destination because newsflash: the destination is death. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> but I do think like yeah, there's definitely like can I, another thing is so because I, uh, long story short, I'm having a hard time sleeping in my bedroom because it makes me sad. So I've been sleeping on the couch in the living room, but because I'm sleeping on the couch in the living room, I'm staying up later with Joe and watching TV. So my sleep schedule has now shifted from me going to bed and cursing Joe's name for not coming to bed with me to someone who stays up late into the night with my husband. And we have been having so much fucking fun and we've been laughing so hard. And it's like, I I loved him before and I love him even more now. Yeah. And it's like our, our relationship has changed from into like, a bigger friendship than I even knew was possible because I worship the man and I love him and I'm obsessed with him. And like now we have these giggly, stupid fucking late nights where we're like, let's watch another episode. And then I'm like, what time is it? And he looks at the fl- the phone and he's like, it's 11. And it's like, <laughs> it's three o'clock in the morning. And we've been up all night, like giggling, like fucking idiots and talking about nothing and watching these trashy TV shows like Terminal List, which I love. <laughs> it's trash. But um, it's but so. So the point is, if I had stayed on my, I go to bed at eight and I read and I wake up and this is my regiment, I never would have had this joy with Joe. And we'll be back to that because you and I are those girls. Oh yeah, I'll be back to that. But next it's week. fun in the moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris, she did specifically want your advice as well. So basically, she's moving out of her parents' house and uh, into her first apartment with her girlfriend, and she's uh, she's fearful of it causing a lot of anxiety um, surrounding the change. Um, I mean, I think what you guys said is really, really great, first off. Like, I think you had a lot of really good advice already. I don't know that I can add to that other than give, like, past experiences of, like, when I left my parents' house and moved into, like, the apartment that I'm in currently. That was terrifying for me. And not being, I'm just, like, I get very attached to people, uh, whether that's a relationship or my mother or whatever. Like, I, once I love somebody, you're my everything and I can't live without you, you know? And uh, so leaving my mother, right, and going to an apartment was really really tough for me um and i didn't think i could do that but i did and i got used to it and it was tough at first and sleeping situation was weird and living situation and like food and all of it was weird and scary but um and ended up being for the best um and i find that a lot of things that scared me even like my first relationship who i thought i was going to marry this person um we didn't and i was you know cheated on we broke up and stuff ended up being for the best and looking back i realized how bad and toxic that relationship was and i grew from it and i learned a lot from it and so i think it's it's terrifying always when these things happen but at least from my life experiences they almost always end up being for the best and I know, I mean, it's completely different, like, losing someone, like, something like what Lizzie, Lizzie's been through, or or, or anything, like, a living thing that you're attached to, right? Yeah. But, um, I don't know, I mean, I think I truly believe that at some point it gets better, and, I, and I've, I've said this on the podcast, and I'm just, like, repeating myself now, I, I don't think I have better advice than what you guys gave, but I've just found that as impossible as things have felt, and as much as I haven't want, wanted to be here at times, that eventually always goes away, 
and I eventually always feel better. And then I always end up being happy for having stuck through it and life is worth it in the end. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I specifically like what you said about being scared and like how terrifying it can be to go through a change. And I was uh, actually like having a public conversation about this this morning a little bit. But when I was a little girl, I was absolutely fucking terrified to be alone in my bedroom. I was positive if I stayed by myself in my room through the night, I was going to die. There was no other option. I would scream. I would sit in my room to the age of like eight. Like this was a long fucking terror phase where I would scream bloody murder. I would sneak out of my room as soon as my parents were asleep and I would hide underneath my dad's dirty laundry and sleep in their room and they would wake up like pissed that I had slept in their room again. And one night they like forced me into my room and they were like, you need to stay here all night. You cannot leave this room like you know, on on the brink of boarding my door up so I couldn't sneak out and come sleep in their dirty clothes. And I screamed all night and I cried all night and I was so fucking scared. And then the fucking sun came up in the morning and I realized that all of my fears, everything that my childhood anxiety was telling me would happen did not happen. And because I sat through it, even though it was agonizing and horrible and terrifying, I came to the realization that I would be okay if I faced the fear and went through it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the only way to get over shit. You got to scream through the night and know that the sun's going to rise in the morning. And I think the more that we can embrace change, and I'm speaking to myself too, the better our lives become. Because holding on to something that isn't or trying to force something that your life is trying to take you away from Mm -hmm. is only going to make you miserable. And I think that everything that you embrace or every change that happens happens to you there's a new gift that will unfold and you're gonna like walk down this surprising curvy road of life that is obvious like something that's so great to embrace yeah. you know and also it's so sick not living with your parents dude <laughs> it is so fucking chill to not live with your parents <laughs> you're gonna get out there and be like what was i thinking you know you can you can fuck on your couch it's crazy. <laughs> you can fuck in your kitchen. You can jack off wherever you want. You can jizz them everywhere, bitch. You can rub your menstrual blood down the walls. Who gives a fuck? It's your apartment. Yikes. Okay. Well, I hope we helped. Um, we have a lot more advice, but there were honestly some great submissions, but we'll get into it on next week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting our show. Uh, obviously, subscribe to Lizzie's vlog channel. Yeah, obviously. Lizzie Gordon. <laughs> Chris has one too. Maybe he'll make a comeback on vlogging. He started vlogging today in the fucking airport. He's like, you're vlogging? I'm vlogging. Everyone's inspired. <laughs> Everybody's vlogging. Um, uh, listen to Shane's podcast. And thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. We love you. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the, the sip. sip.